Hey guys, welcome. This is Brad Krantz. Thanks so much for joining me here today on my Monday Morning Leadership. We're going to talk about be the leader that you would follow. What does that mean? I'm going to talk about eight ways that you can be the leader that people want to follow. But first off, because it's Monday here, especially in the U.S., it's Memorial Day, and I want to give honor and uh, thanks to our veterans who paid their life, gave their life uh, to defend our country and keep us free. So Happy Memorial Day, everybody here in the U.S. My goal, guys, I mean, just where my heart is in doing these videos is I want to positively influence what true leadership looks like. And this is just a small part in doing it. But I also believe part of this is to be the leader that people want to follow. And I can ask a couple questions initially, but are you this type of leader? And do people want to follow you? I mean, John Maxwell's famously said, if you think you're leading and nobody's following, you're just taking a walk. So how can you be a leader that people want to follow? How would you go about doing that? And what does that look like? This isn't a massive dissertation, just a few, again, eight quick points, some of my observations on those points, but hopefully this will go towards supporting and promoting leadership. So the eight ways that you can be the leader that people would follow. First, is humility, right? You've got to lead with humility. A humble leader acknowledges that uh, they can succeed only with the help of others. And again, I go back to the illustration of if you see a frog on top or a turtle, I'm sorry, on top of a, a fence post, you know that it didn't get there by himself. It had help too. And I think leaders, we need to acknowledge, you know, as leaders, we're dependent upon others. We didn't get there by ourselves, and I think I'm, I do have a problem with this idea that somehow somebody's a self-made multimillionaire, self-made success. Guys, nobody does it on their own. Anybody who's truly successful knows and understands that they didn't do it and they can't do it on their own. So we need to acknowledge that we can only succeed with the help of others. And again, that requires leadership to get others to help us. And again, to be the leader that you would follow because if people aren't following you, you're going to have a hard time being successful. Second is you've got to have a compelling vision. And I'm going to alliterate here, um, you know, to be compelling, right? Your vision has to be one. It's got to be positive, uh, something that others see as desired. Then it's got to be personal. It's got to be something that will benefit others personally or directly, not something that's abstract. And then it's got to be possible, right? A destination people can see themselves reaching, right? And third, you've got to take responsibility. This is a huge one, guys. We have a major challenge in our country, especially in the political realm, uh, social realm. People don't want to take responsibility. I've said it before, and I'll keep saying it. Leaders take responsibility, right? As a leader, we don't make excuses. We don't blame others. And Harry Truman famously said, as our president, the buck stops here. And it's got to with leadership. Otherwise, you're not being a leader. And I'll say it again, leaders have more responsibilities than they have rights. So we have to really take this point to heart and understand it. Again, leaders take responsibility, right? We need to do that for people to follow because I want to follow somebody who takes responsibility for the good, what they do, the mistakes they make, and they don't try to pass the buck. They're not trying to blame each other or others. They're not playing the victim mentality, which is huge, unfortunately, in our uh, society today. Take responsibility, take responsibility for your life, take responsibility for your actions, guys. So if you want to be a leader that people would follow, that's a huge one. Fourthly is be consistent. And I just say in your response and your emotions, guys, this goes a long way. I think we've all worked for people who are, you call them like hot and cold. They're hot one day, cold the next. Or one day they're on top of the world, the next day they're down the dumps or they're, or they're angry one day and not the other. Guys, as a leader, we have to be consistent in how we respond to people and I'll just call it being responsible and in control of our emotions. So people know what to expect, right? If you're consistent, they know, hey, Brad, yeah, he's pretty even keeled. Doesn't matter what's going on um, in his life, but he's even. He can't be hot and cold. He can't be angry and glad because you're going to confuse people. And trust me, and you've probably seen it too, people that are like that. You just, you never know. We, we call it walking on eggshells. You can't be like that and be a leader. So be consistent in your response and in your emotions, and you can be the leader that people want to follow. Five is be affirming, and this is huge. This is another huge one. You know, it's basically offering someone emotional support or encouragement, and this goes a long way. And again, this is one I think that gets too much, doesn't get enough 
play out there, especially, especially in the business and corporate world. My daughter just started a new job with a great chiropractic firm, and she's already getting emotional support. She's getting encouragement. She's getting feedback for something not good, but she's getting praise and support by the doctors who come and say, hey, you did a really good job. And guys, that goes a long way. That is leadership because where she worked before was a toxic environment. I won't go into that, but no, really an affirmation. So people need to be affirmed. I need to be affirmed. We need to, as leaders, affirm other people by giving them emotional support and encouragement. You know, if they don't do something right, and I'm not a big believer at, at all in constructive criticism, I think that's an oxymoron, but tell people, hey, here's where you could do better. Here's what, here's what you did right. I just want to let you know, because then we're giving people feedback. They're hearing how they're doing. So they're just a cog in the wheel, uh, where does it really matter? what they're doing. So that's really huge, guys. Be affirming if you want to be a leader that people would follow. And sixth, show you care, right? By your actions, you know, actions speak louder than words. You can say people don't know, care how much you know until they know how much you care, but you've got to demonstrate your care by actions. Maybe things you do, uh, maybe a thank you note or email or just something that tells people that you really care. And I think this one too is a, something that gets underplayed out there overlooked by a lot of people. I'd say good leaders should, but managers and that, if you don't think your manager or boss really cares, then you're probably not going to care too much about your job either. So if you're a leader and you want to be a leader, people would follow, show that you care and demonstrate that by your actions. And then number seven here is give respect. This is huge, right? Respect means that you accept somebody for who they are, even when they're different from you or you don't agree with them, right? You don't have to be on the same wavelength politically or or from a religious standpoint, guys, there, we can tolerate people that aren't exactly like us and we can still be respectful and show respect to them. And so you show respect in your relationships. And what that ends up doing is it builds trust. It builds safety. It builds well-being. And respect doesn't have to come naturally. In fact, I don't know that necessarily does. It's something you learn. It, it, it's a learned skill like anything else. You can be a respectful person in your heart, but learn how to respect people, especially, again, we could take this to our society today. There needs to be much more respect given and shown on both sides um, in the political realm, but you have to learn how to do it. It's a learned skill. So you can get learn how to be the leader that people would follow by showing respect to people, right? And then lastly, communication is key, right? In, in anything. And I'm just going to tie this into a, one of the key characteristics of servant leadership, with, which is listening and empathy. And I really believe these things stick out to me. They go together. You know, if you're communicating, right, one, you're listening to what people are saying. And I believe to be a good listener, you have to be able to empathize, put yourself in somebody else's shoes. And again, we can go back to having respect for them and showing you care. Those go hand in hand. You know, you can just kind of listen and pass it off. Okay, you know, and you didn't, you didn't really listen. But if you really care about somebody and you empathize with them, you're going to listen when, when they talk to you about someone, when they bring up a concern or they, they, have, they don't understand something. You need to be as a leader effective in your communication. That's that's a two-way street, right? It's not just telling people what they need to do or what you expect, and that's part of it, but listening and including empathy are going to go a long way. So guys, thanks so much for joining me here today on my Monday morning leadership, and I hope it was helpful to learn some, get some insights on being the leader that you would follow. I would love to get your input on this situations. Maybe you've been in where um, how do these uh, characteristics here relate to you? Have you, have you, would you add something to this list? You, this list is not definitive, so you could add to it, but I'd love to get your feedback on this, comments. And again, thank you so much for joining me today on my Monday Morning Leadership. Have an awesome and safe Memorial Day. Bye-bye.